Jesus Crucified to set me free Now I live to bring in praise What's going on there, you guys? Uh, this is uh, Pastor Ryan with Heart of the King Ministries. And um, we're, I just wanted to share um, just a short word. And um, this is just our midweek Bible study, but we're actually just doing it online this Wednesday. Next Wednesday, we'll be in person. Um, we're actually going to start a study um, in a series on prayer. And so we were kind of like in this theme about trusting God. And now I believe that God has put something else in my heart, um, just a new direction that we're going to just talk about prayer. And, you know, prayer is so powerful. It is something that you need um, if you're a Christian. And um, it's okay if you struggle with your prayer life. Um, it's all right if sometimes your mind just drifts off somewhere or maybe it's just difficult for you to pray. And, you know, we're going to talk about that because ultimately the devil, what he wants to do is he wants to separate you from Jesus. That is his goal. And prayer brings us close to the Lord. It brings us near to God. And so as a matter of fact, let's just pray right now and um, open our hearts and um, I don't have a real long message. I really don't. Just a few scriptures. Uh, just an introduction to our series on prayer. I'm excited. I think it's going to be a blessing. And so um, just pray with me. Lord, we just thank you, God, for um, your goodness, God, for your love. God, we thank you, Lord, that you are so good to everyone who calls on your name, Lord. And I just ask, God, that you would speak to our hearts, God, that whoever it is, God, that that you're willing to reach with this message, God, that it would encourage and strengthen and help them grow, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go over um, and start just with the prayer um, in Luke chapter 11, verse 1. And so um, we're going to just read it. And um, it's Jesus speaking. And actually, it's disciples who actually ask him a question. And this is what they say. Now, it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased that one of the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And so here we have the disciples of Jesus who see Jesus praying and they long to have the intimacy that Jesus has with the Father. And that's a good thing, by the way. And, you know, that you see their humility because they say, we don't know how to pray, Lord. We need you to teach us how to pray. You know, it says in the Bible that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. And so there is some humility when we come to the Lord and we say, you know what, Lord, I need you to teach me, Lord. I need you to teach me how to pray. And so the disciples asked him that question. And the awesome thing about Jesus is Jesus didn't say that that was a stupid question or made them feel bad. Matter of fact, Jesus instructs them and teaches them how to pray. And we're going to talk about this. You also can find this in the book of Matthew uh, where Jesus um, has the Lord's Prayer. Um, but we're going to talk about this because it's going to help us when we pray. And, you know, as we read this, I just want to remind you and encourage you that I don't necessarily have an interpretation that's apart from anything from the Bible. Um, I don't have a special revelation that God has given me, but just the word of God. And so in Luke 11, chapter 2, verse 2, he says to them, well, this is how you pray when you pray. And I just want to remind you that Jesus did said, didn't say if you prayed. He said when you pray. And so it's important that as a believer and in the Lord and a Christian, we need to have a prayer life. We need to have a time set aside daily for God on a daily basis. You know, I prefer the mornings myself. That's kind of my prayer time. And I actually was living with a gentleman who was a Christian and he'd get up about four in the morning and I would always see him. He was so faithful, r rain or shine. And God spoke to my heart that that's how I was going to start my day. And so we need to have a prayer life. We need to have a time set aside for God, a time about being intentional and saying, this is just my time and this is your time. This is our time, Lord. And so we're going to talk about the power of prayer and drawing near to God. Sometimes when we pray, we don't always have to have words. 
Sometimes we need to just sit in the presence of God and God can minister to our hearts. We most definitely need to learn to cast all of our anxieties and our cares and our worries at the feet of Jesus. And we do this in prayer. Prayer is where we find strength to face the day. It's where we find encouragement. It's where we find love. It's where ultimately we find the Father. It's through prayer. And so Jesus teaches his disciples how to pray. And this is what he says. He says, when you pray, not if, but when. So we need to have a prayer life. He says to them, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven. Now, I want you to understand when Jesus is saying, say this, it doesn't mean that he's saying for you to do some type of chant or just repeat this prayer. But I want you to understand that the Lord's prayer is a model and an expression to God. And there is a heartbeat behind it. And I want us to understand the heartbeat of what Jesus is saying. Because I don't want a prayer to be something just generic or something that we just chant over and over again that doesn't have any meaning. Our prayers are intimacy with God. You know, there is no greater way to express intimacy through prayer and also worship, you know, and the veil is torn, which means that there's nothing that separates us from God the Father because we have a sacrifice who's God, God the Son. And so he says this, when you pray, say, our Father who's in heaven and so what Jesus is saying is Jesus refers to God as our Father who's in heaven. And Jesus is establishing a role of who God is to you and who God is to me. Okay? God is our heavenly Father and we are his children. It's very important that you understand that. That what Jesus is trying to convey to this, his disciples is what he's trying to say is that God is not just somebody that is up in the air or somebody that is far away. But what he's trying to say is that God is our heavenly father. Okay? And it's important that we understand that we are his children. And that's the role that God has for us. Now, I want you to understand in John 4, 24, it says that, that God is spirit and God is not a male and God is not a female. He's actually the creator of a male and the creator of a female. But I think that, you know, Jesus used these terms in the Bible to, to illustrate and help us understand the creator God and who he is in our lives. Because God just doesn't want to be somebody that is far away. He doesn't want to be somebody um, that is just mean. He doesn't want to be just somebody that you just make chance to. He wants to have intimacy, a certain relationship with you. And he establishes that role as a father. And I just say that because I want you to understand that some people who have a, had abusive fathers or maybe have had some hurt from abuse of men, I want you to understand that God is not like any of those people, okay? And actually, God is not a person, but his role in, in our lives is he's our heavenly father. And so I just want to ask a question to help us understand what's the role of the father in the day of Jesus? What is Jesus trying to convey when he says that God is our heavenly father? See, the father was the leader. Um, he was the protector he was the provider. He was the example. Um, he was able to be strong for the family. Um, he was to provide an example of love toward his wife and toward his children. See, the father was to teach the children right from wrong, to correct them, to discipline them with love, and to help them understand right from wrong. And Jesus, whenever he prayed, it says in the Bible, whenever Jesus referred to God, he referred to God as his father. Now that's very important because there are some people um, that go and knock on doors called Jehovah Witnesses, and they claim that we need to call God by his name. And I just want you to think about this, apart from even the Bible, when do I ever call my father by his first name? I don't. I call him father. And before that, I called him dad. And even before that, I called him 
daddy, right? And that's the role of God. And so when Jesus uh, prays, he always prays to the Father. And it's important that you understand that example that Jesus laid down, that he didn't just pray to anybody, but he prayed to the Father. And I'm just going to give you some examples of when Jesus prayed to the Father. He said in John 10 30, I and my Father are one, referring to God. In John 6 44, he says, no one came, can, can come to me unless the Father uh, talking about God who sent me draws him and I will raise him up on the last days. In John 10, 15, he says, as the father knows me, even so I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And then in Matthew 26, 39, when Jesus is at the garden of Gethsemane and he's about to go to the cross and he's pleading to the father. And this is what he says when he went a little further he fell on his face and he said, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And so I want you to understand that Jesus is the greatest example for us to follow. And he says that God is our father. And when he tells the disciples, when he teaches them how to pray, he teaches them to address God as their heavenly father. Now, I'm not saying it's okay to pray to Jesus. Amen. It's okay to pray to the Holy Spirit. But ultimately, when Jesus lays down the example and when Jesus prays, he prays to the Father. And I want you to understand that God is our Father in heaven. Okay? And that's important to understand too because again, if you had an abusive father or maybe you had a father that left you or abandoned you or maybe a father that wasn't a good example, this might be a hard concept for you to understand a loving father. But it's important for you to understand that God is our father in heaven, that God is perfect and he is the perfect father and his love for you is perfect. And we need to understand that God, the father is not like any earthly father that you ever had, because even an earthly father that loves his children at best is still just a person. But God is our father in heaven. We need to understand that when we come to the Lord, we need to reverence him and understand that he is in heaven and that we are on earth, right? We need to understand that God is holy and he dwells in the kingdom of heaven, that he dwells in the eternal place, that he dwells with almighty power, with almighty uh, everything, that everything is in God's hands, that he is still the alpha and the omega, that he's still the beginning and he's still the end. But the awesome thing about your father who's in heaven is he is your father, the creator of all the ends of the earth, the most powerful being in the whole entire universe. There is no other who is stronger or mightier or powerful. That is your dad. That's my dad. Isn't that awesome? I mean, you know, it's kind of when you're like a kid, maybe you could kind of be proud of your dad or, or maybe say, you know, that's my dad, you know. But I want you to think and understand that you have a father that's in heaven. It's important you understand the role of God. So God is our father in heaven. And not only that, but I want you to understand that because God is your father, and you are his child, that you are always welcome in his home, okay? And I want you to understand that God loves you with an unconditional love. Now, what does that mean? That means that my daughter will always be my daughter. I will never disown her. I will always love her, no matter how many mistakes she makes, no matter how many times she stumbles, or whatever struggle she may face, I will be there to help her because I love her. Now, my daughter can choose at a certain age to get up and leave my house and never return if she doesn't want a relationship with me. Okay, and the truth is, is that we can leave the heavenly father. We can walk away from the presence of God, but on the same token, God will never walk away from you. God will never leave you. God will always be there to guide you and protect you and lead you because he is your father who's in heaven. 
So that's all that I have tonight. This is just an introduction. We're actually going to be in person next uh, Wednesday. And, um, you know, this is just an introduction to our series as we're going to understand prayer and the power of prayer and how we desperately need prayer because it's in that secret place um, that we find refuge and safety and security. And it's in that secret place that God speaks to our heart and reveals himself to us. And so I just want to remind you this evening that when you pray, and I want to encourage you to pray, I want to encourage you to have a prayer life. Make sure you set aside a time every day to make sure that you set aside set aside uh, time to pray. And when you do pray, I just want to remind you that when you pray, that Jesus says to pray in this manner, our Father who's in heaven. And I want you to understand that your God is in heaven and he's your heavenly father and he loves you. God longs to spend time with you. God desires to spend time with you. God wants intimacy with you. I know that you may want God and you may be striving to live a life pleasing to God and that's awesome and we should, but I just want to remind you that God is crazy about you too, that God loves you, that even while we are still a sinner, that Christ Jesus died for us, that God desires more than anything intimacy, a special relationship with you, and you can have a special relationship with God. It says in 1 John 1, 12, to those who received him and believed him, he gave us the right to become the children of God. And so even if you don't know what to say, even if you just want to be quiet, even if you just want to cry, even if you just want to sit, that's okay. But I want to encourage you to draw near to the Father through prayer. prayer. Because like I said, the devil, really what his agenda is, is to separate you from God's love and separate you from the presence of God. And I want to encourage you, draw near to God and he will draw near to you, it says in the book of James. And so when you pray, remember that God is your father and that he's your father in heaven. Amen. Love you guys. God bless you guys. If you want to come join us, uh, we're going to be at church this Sunday. We're actually running out the North High School. And uh, if you want to come join us, you're welcome to come join us. Um, God is so good and he's so faithful. And so from the North High School, if you want to come join us, you can make a left on Chicago and a left on Linden. And we're on the left hand, left hand side. And so you're welcome to come join us in the parking lot. Um, we're actually using the multi-purpose room at the North High School. Our service time starts at 1045 AM. AM sorry, I'm stumbling on my words. And then also, I want to encourage you to come join us for our series of prayer. As we begin to talk about prayer, I want to encourage you to come join as much as you can because I believe that we're going to grow and I believe that more than ever right now we need God desperately in our lives. Love you guys and God bless. Thank you for taking the time to listen.